Yo guys, what's going on? It is your boy from the land down under here, Jetman99 here. Uh, and I'm the CEO of the Lonely Draft League, otherwise known as the LDL. Uh, and I'm actually here for the Season 7 Power Rankings. And and I'm actually joined by the ghost of all ghosts, the Lazy Ghost. CEO is a really nice title. Uh, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> and uh yeah just uh just a real true honor to be doing this with the ceo but yeah i'm excited <laughs> to break down some teams and some drafts it is it is it is it is and and actually pair rankings are a first for the ldl uh uh taking it over this season i wanted to make it bigger and better and bring in new things that we that we haven't sort of necessarily done before and to be able to further the league uh, further into the future and what it is actually yeah. at the moment. Yeah, and I, I think the the key thing, since this is new, uh, this is just for fun. Um, this this list isn't is basically what we think uh, preseason before a game's been even played. So I would say if you're watching at home, if you if you like your place on the list, you know, prove us right, and if you don't, prove us wrong, <laughs> and, exactly, and have a chip exactly. it going into the season. So, exactly. but definitely meant to have fun. Yes, and I would actually say that. Uh, uh, personally, uh, my power rankings are like sort of based off team synergy and not the player in a sense. Yeah. Kind of sort of thing. But yeah, it's really hard to get a, a, a scope on what people are going to do this season before they play a game. And so Definitely. you got to take pass finishes, draft synergy from what you could tell. And yep. it's basically just uh, kind of a good guess right now. And then for the way that Jesse and I handled our own rankings, we basically didn't put ourselves on a list. And we had the other person place us on their list, if that makes sense. So, for example, I did a list of 15 without myself, and Jesse put my name on my list where he thought, and vice versa. So, yeah, yeah. without that uh, with that being said, we'll kind of jump into things. Yeah, uh, and we're actually going to start off with the bottom eight. Uh, and why don't you start ahead and in saying why <laughs> the Outback Kamala is your last yeah. team. So... <laughs> Starting off, uh, I'm so sorry I, sh I disrespected the CEO, but yes, you know I, I really didn't uh, have the heart to put any of the new guys there at 16. So I felt like you know the the wild card Jesse Master Bates is going to go in there <laughs> and prove everybody wrong from 16 to, to number one, and that's, uh, well, that's why so. I got you down there at so, 16. So. But overall, you know the team's really strong. I think Mega Pincer would thrive. Uh, yes. I think that. Um, the the only thing that is, is really going to determine the season is you know did, is Mega Pincer up there in the kill leader slot? Yes, basically it is kind of my do or die in a sense. But opening number sixteen, I actually have the Midwest Mill Tank uh, and their coach Chris. And my reasoning for this is that his team is good. I like the tower there, but he doesn't have the necessary sort of cause because I don't. Uh, and because he has, and because he has, uh, what he is a fire water grass core, and then for his, and then for his fairy dragon steel core, he only has a Klefki, uh, which is fairy mm -hmm. and also steel. So he's kind of like in the, uh, that like three person core, to be able to sort of take the bulk, and and sort of be able to switch around his team sort of. So, no hate to Chris, but it's just sort of the way he sort of builds <laughs> it. But. I hope that he can actually change it in the future to uh, able to make it better and be able to make playoffs, hopefully, because, yeah. it, uh, uh, because it is his first season, actually. Yep, first yeah. season. Definitely yeah. got the, the, the rookie glow about him. And, yes. uh, yeah, so is he going to be the next rookie of the year from, you know, 16th in Jesse's power rank? He's all the way to number one, the only time Simmons, will you know. So I'll go ahead and uh, jump into my 15th pick, uh, which is the the Moon Valley Mewtwo and Coach Brandon. Now, he's he's really in my 15 slot for one sole reason. His team has power. He showed that he is an accomplished battler. He made playoffs in LDL LC, and he's 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 been very solid in the past. The only question mark I have, and it's a big one, is can Articuno be the only hazard cleaner on a team yes. and and still reliably get hazards off the field and win games? So um, I think if he answers that question, he, he moves up a lot higher on my list. But overall, okay. really solid team. 
It's good to see. Uh, and actually, I have Shea, who was a coach of the Lake Erie Gyarados, and also his team lacks a steel type. Like, steel types are fundamental for the draft league, and just the bulk, and to be able to take hits uh, when necessary. He does have a ditto, which is a really good mon, and which can also come in as like a steel type sort of mon, but you have to kind of predict the switch in a sense, sort of. But yeah, but, uh, but, uh, and also, uh, what? He has a Milotic, Blaziken, and then the Whimsicott. It's not bad, but in my opinion, his team is kind of lacking the fundamentals that he needs for a solid core, in a sense. So, uh, and also, in my 14th spot, I have the Victorville the Victinis and their coach Anthony. Just because, uh, 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 he has his cause, but, uh, but I don't think the team is built entirely based around, like, covering, uh, based on covering, like, weaknesses and that. Uh, because it has the Mew, which is amazing, and also the Savelli, but, but I just hope that he knows what he's doing with the team and that he can prove me wrong and, and be able to come out on top and have his first playoffs appearance. If you want All right. To throw, 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 yeah, throw, 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 I will yeah. take it from there. So uh, coming in at my 14 slot, I've got the Clearfield Charmander, and let's just take a moment to take a look at that logo. And that's a that's a really clean looking logo. Uh, Coach Jordan of the Clearfield Charmanders at my 14 slot. Uh, he's quickly addressing some of the reasons why I have him at 14. Double what, double quad fire weakness Pokemon with the Mega Scissor. And Cartana, yes. um, especially considering Cartana's, I think like base 57, 53, or something like that. Forty-five, Special I think defense. it is. Forty-five, or something. Just, just random powers on things that even have, you know, base sixty special attack are going to yeah. be able to KO that thing. And in a counter team format like draft, it's really hard to to thrive. So he's already taken the car, no, not the Cartana, the Mega Scissor, and turned that into Mega Gardevoir. Yeah. I like what he's doing there. He'll have very powerful responses to steel and poison types with Doug Trio and Garchomp supporting that Mega Gardevoir. Mm -hmm. So I'm really interested to see how his team turns. These rankings were done immediately after the draft, yes. so I'm not factoring in the Gardevoir. So maybe Gardevoir comes in week two and takes him up the rankings this yes. season. So it will be, it will be interesting to see uh, how he uh, uses some of the creativity this season. Definitely. Now, if you want to go on field, that ain't pick. Yep. So at 13, I've got the Kansas City Kinglers and Coach Trigg, another rookie on the list. Uh, we've got the rookies low. It's not for anything other than the fact that they haven't uh, done a, I believe, a main league before. And it's a it's a grueling season. It's a lot of mm. fun, but it's a lot of team building and coming up with a lot of different sets so that people aren't kind of creep in the things that you have a tendency to run. So with that said, the only, the reason I've got uh, Trig down at the 13 spot, uh, the base Spadef, uh, the average on his team is 73. So it, it's going to be really hard for him to tank some of the or the especially offensive sweepers or just things that are running choice specs mm -hmm. without having to just just go, you know, calm, max spadef, yeah. HP on things that don't normally operate in a special defense mode. Other than that, this is one of the most creative teams I saw drafted. And if anybody's going to get the most out of it, it is Trig. So I'm excited to see what he does. And maybe he finds a way to to, to probably add a little bit more bulk. That's that's one of the things I could see him doing to the yes. group. Uh, and for myself, uh, at the number 13 spot, I actually have Jordan. And his Clearfield Charmanders. Uh, 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 he has a good core in actual form of Garchomp, regular Gardevoir, uh, and and also the Kartana. But uh, 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 that's a solid core. Uh, what's lacking is that he has no defense, no, uh, no special attack, and also no special defense. Uh, but his attack and also speed is sky high. And that's the reason why that he's above uh, Anthony. And also the fact that for Jordan, you, uh, all you have to do is just basically bring a fire, water, grass core and a nice type, and you just run through his team. So, uh, so he's lacking the, the coverage, uh, but I'm uh, sure that he will cover it up 
and with a few trades in the early weeks coming. So, eh. and in the and in the number twelve spot, I have uh, I have Brandon and and his Moon Valley Mutus because it was a Zygarde fifty, uh, Pro Marina, yeah. <laughs> and also Jirachi. Uh, that's a solid Fairy Dragon Steel Core. Uh, that's just mm-hmm. solid, basically. And there's and there's and there's like nothing much that you can sort of do about it. And also with the Breloom, Pro Marina, and, and, and Arcanine. And that's also another solid uh, Fire Water Grass Core. Basically, yeah. Uh, Jordan's yeah, Jordan's and I Jordan. guess earlier yeah. I kind of missed one form of hazard uh, removal, and that is just uh, getting Iron Head flitches with Jirachi so they cannot set up the hazards. Basically. So that may be uh, how he uh, deals with it. Yeah, just power flinch, basically. So that's all you have to do. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, but... I've a friend in week one, and I have a plan. So, shh, don't, don't, I don't say anything. Oh. But yeah, but if you're random, uh, I've noticed that he actually, Eddie has actually gone sort of offensive this season, uh, with, uh, with a high attack, and a special attack, uh, but his defenses are lacking in a sense. So, do you want to go on for your twelfth pick now? Yeah, yeah. So at number twelve, I have another rookie, potential rookie sensation in the Midwest Mill Tank, which is Coach Chris. And I really like this team. I think any team that has Cresselia can say that their team is defensive because Cresselia is just a defensive powerhouse in league format. Not too many teams are going to have things that can just one shot a Cresselia, and so you know. Being able to step into his first season with something, I, I would say with a team that allows him to make really safe reads and consistently put on pressure and adding in the fact that he's got a fire type mode to this, I think makes him really tough to prep for. Mm. So really all he'll have to answer is, you know, how do you do in your very first season? I think he's got the team to do it and end up in the top eight and uh, overall really, really strong team. Yeah, he does like it. I like it solid, but I'm actually keen to see what he does with it, basically. Yeah, I'm. I'm really. I've never been excited this excited for a tier five pick, but the Lilligan <laughs> is a is a true threat in the Sun, um, mm. and uh, it'll be exciting to see how how fun he brings it. Mm. So, but doesn't he also I, like... if he doesn't bring fire mode, Landers yeah. T, Crest, Tentacruel, mm. Charizard Y, Umbreon. He's got a lot of really threatening mm. stuff. He does. Yep. So okay, and at number eleven, I have I believe the current leader in championship points uh, for tournaments in TLTPG uh, this year. I'm I think lost. that is official yeah, as of now. I think it is. Yeah. So I've got the Victorville Victini and Coach Anthony. Um, I've got him at eleven. Uh, he is definitely one of the more creative team builders, and he has a team that you can. If you are creative, it's it's set up for you to get the most out of it. Mew, I think, is the most versatile Pokemon in Draft League format. Gets access to literally every TM and HM available. And just one week, it can be a nasty plot setup sweeper. And the next week, it can be a max defense will o set that's able to take on something like a Zygarde 50 that's banded. So um, just the... The kind of versatility that thing this thing offers is off the charts and the only reason i have him a little bit lower is his two fastest pokemon are mew and latios both psychic types at 100 and 110 so um i think the way you get the most out of latios is not forcing it into one role and he may just have to run scarf latios a lot of weeks to revenge kill but um, other than that i think he's got a really solid team does uh and my number 11, uh, I actually have the Lakewood Trevenant and their coach Alejandro, also known as the Beard. And and I'm going to say sorry here because uh, because Alejandro has has like a really good team here. Uh, oh, oh, with what? The Tomatoes T, Slowbro, and Yen Chow. And then a solid a regenerator core. But he can just swap out, swap out, swap out and just have the health there. The whole time, basically. So yeah, uh, he also has a he, he also has a Heatran, a Romatus, a and no Dragon there actually, from what I'm seeing at the moment. 
don't think there is yet. There isn't. Uh, but it does actually have the fire water grass core uh, uh, in the form of Mega Venusaur, Heatran, and also Slowbro. So it is a solid team. Alejandro is able to back up his team uh, with his playstyle on that. So I'm looking forward to what he can do and what he brings uh, in in uh, in the upcoming weeks. But he is low on the list because uh, uh, because his fire weakness it is quite big, actually. So he does have the Heatran and also like this and also like the Slabber on that. But even if you bring a fire type, uh, it'll actually do some damage to his team. Uh, and in the number 10, 10 spot, I actually have Trig myself uh, and his team, the Kansas City Kinglers. Uh, and this is because Trig is a solid team. Uh, with uh, 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 with the Clef Able, Zygarde ten percent, and also Fortress, why well, uh, and that's a solid core basically. Uh, he also has the he also has the Rain Core, uh, in Palapa, and also and also Kingdra. So he so he does have the option for that Swift Swim, and and he's able to run some speed if he needs to. Uh, his defenses are lacking a bit. But I'm gonna say from his uh, from his special attack offense, uh, he he will be able to put in the work and be able to make use of the rain and uh, and the core that he has. So I'm looking forward to it. Cool. All right. So I guess it's back to me at ten. Is that right? Yep. All right. So at and number the best ten. Logo. What was that? And the best logo in the league. Oh yeah, yeah, this this is a uh, powerful logo and it matches a really powerful draft for the Chelsea Fellstingers and Coach DJ. I I think this is the most offensive team, arg arguably, it's definitely top two <laughs> most offensive teams, uh, but it is up there yeah, and definitely. this is going to be really exciting. I think this is DJ's best draft in the in the format. The only question will really come, or the only question that will come will be hyper offense really demands the aggressive hard reads at times, and those can really make or break your season. So you'll see a lot of other teams opt for a lot more bulk so that they don't have to make those risky switch ins. The only risky switch ins are later in the game when you're trying to pull out a certain win condition. Yes. But hyper offense, you've got to put pressure. KO pressure on every turn and to do that you've got to make aggressive doubles and switches and so on and so yeah. forth I think the B drill helps ease that uh, being able to click U-turns a lot easier than mm. making those doubles but and he's also got a fast U-turn on Infernape but so he's got the right tools mm. to keep momentum up um, I he think does. if he makes his way into the top 8 I'm making a prediction here Niall Ego will be top 3 in really okay oh, that's some um... Yeah, if he's if prediction? he's a little yeah, the caveat there if he if he makes the top eight so he makes playoffs it will mm. be because Nihiligo got him. Okay. That's All right, good. and at number nine before we reveal the uh, top eight, I've got the Lake Erie Gyarados and Coach Shea. So I'll kind of piggyback on some of the things he said. He doesn't have a steel type. I get that. Um, I think he himself gets that too because he's already been in the chat looking to make some moves looking to shake things up so i like the fact that he waited to the very like pit last pick and got latias that that was yes, pretty incredible and is. i i think even though he had a psychic type he couldn't believe it was there and so now he's got to make adjustments but um i think if he if he makes the adjustments this is a really strong team weather is a big factor in prep having a base 150 mega I can tell you Mega Aerodactyl is really solid. He'll be able to run adamant most weeks because things aren't that fast. Um, mm. So really, it'll come down to can you keep the pressure on? I think he's got the team to do it. And I, uh, yeah, I, it'll, he went 10 and 0 in FPL last season too. He so did. if we get that Shea, he could definitely be in the top eight. Yes, he can definitely. Uh, and actually had for, if not, if a, uh, if the number nine in, in my spot is actually myself, uh, and I'm and and I'm actually add that my defenses are sky high, a bit a bit myself. I'm actually lacking uh, uh speed, 
big time. Uh, I've got base 64 speed. Uh, I'm liking the big time, but, uh, but I'm hoping that I have the defenses to, uh, to be able to back it up and to be able to prove myself in this number nine spot, essentially. So, yeah, so there's, uh, yes, there's a lot of weight on my shoulders. <laughs> Uh, All right, I'm excited yes. for this top eight. It is. Uh, and another eight for me, I actually have DJ and his team, the Chelsea Felstingers. Uh, it's going off what Arthur said. Uh, his team is solid. He is a B drill in turn eight and also right on Mo uh, with a momentum sort of ability. Uh, he has what, a defog on, uh, on like three months and. And also a fast rapid spinner in the form of Stami, uh, which is really good and all that. Uh, he has the Stami, Infernape, Rodon Mo as a solid core. He has the uh, he has a Kurum, Kling Clang, and also the Toga Kiss as another solid core, which you can go off and be able to rely on uh, the, the whole season. And he just has a powerful team and they can hit hard and. and uh, and if he has a chance to set up, are you, are you just can't do anything about it, basically. Like, he will run to your team if you give him the chance to. So, and that is the reason why that he is at my number eight spot for, uh, for this sort of video. All right, cool. So, at number eight, I've got the Russellville Rockets and another top contender for uh, most badass logo. That is Definitely. pretty cool and the ratty blue wizard prez himself so i've got him at number eight i really like the sand mode i think sand mode with excadrill is very powerful excadrill is one of those pokemon where one of its abilities is going to steamroll through a team if you're not careful it was it going to be mold breaker is it going to be sand force will it be sand rush uh, he's got the Gigalith to be able to set up sand, so something super bulky that can tank hits and set up sand multiple times is really good. I think with, with most sand teams that feature Excadrill, the fighting weakness is always tough to account for, but he's got a really bulky Dusclops, he's got Granbull, he's got a Moongus Regenerator, and he's got Gallade, uh, so really strong answers to fighting types. Um, I overall really like his draft. I think Vaporeon really glues this team together uh, from a defensive standpoint. That water absorb is going to be clutch for him. So overall, I really like his chances. And I know he's uh, fired up about making playoffs and, and claiming the, getting the bag, getting the title this season. Yes, so I got him yes. a number eight. Uh, yeah. And, uh, Prez actually made a playoff spot every season. Every season, I think. LDL hasn't won a, a title yet in LDL, so hey, so let's get us have something to prove. Uh, and uh, any number seven, I actually have Mark, uh, who was the coach of the Arizona Volcarona, and this is purely because Mark is a Tapu Bulu, uh, Probo Pass, which I, which I also think is part steel, if I'm not correct, it is yeah. There, say that. Uh, say that again. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, Probably pass is part steel. Yeah. Probass is rock and steel. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, and he also has a Flygon, uh, which is kind of a decent core. Uh, I like that at least, at least. But I'm just hoping that Mark has a solid team here. Uh, oh, oh, with what some high attack, high special defenses, and some high speed. Uh, and with a Bulu. Uh, he also has some unburdened users uh, in the form of Holucha and also Hitmonlee so he also has that extra speed I like to be able to abuse and also to outspeed any mon that wants to come in on his uh, on his team essentially so if you want to go right, ahead cool. for your 7th yeah I will take it from here I got, I got the Lakewood Trevenants and Coach Beard at number 7 and uh, so I get it. He's got he's got three grass types on paper. He's got a super weakness to fire, but I think if he showed anything in LDL LC, it's that he's he's really excelling in team building right now. So I think for him, he likes the options of what those three different grass types can bring. 
you could make the argument that Venusaur's not really a grass type <laughs> just because of that thick fat ability yeah. and um, I, I don't think he'll ever bring three to a match but he could bring two. Uh, with with yeah. that said Slowbro uh, really glues this team together It it's so fat he's going to be able to run it as a really bulky regenerator he's got Tornadus with regenerator he's got Mega Venusaur which is super fat Heatran which is super fat and he's got good speed he's got the 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 Raichu, Mian Xiao, mm. Tornadus. Uh, he's, he's got some speedy threats. So I, I like overall what he did with this team. I think he'll probably end up wanting to ship out either Decidueye or Lee Vanny for a little bit more yeah. um, options. But even if he keeps uh, keeps it standing pat, he'll be in good shape. And so we'll see if his, if the fire weakness is a, uh, is a problem because he faces off with Brennan week one and the Mega Chart. Yes, he does. Uh and I'm speaking of Brennan, uh, are you having at your number six? Yeah, and I've got the Salt Lake City Swampers and Thumb Brother Two, Coach Brennan, at number six. Really, he's he's been a, a model of consistency. He's made playoffs every single season that he's competed. He was the season two champion, so a former champion in the ranks. All of my top six are former LDL champions, and he's been absolutely on fire in the PGL about to square off with my number two pick in an undefeated matchup so that will be uh, that'll be pretty hype and I, I think for Brennan uh, just like everybody in that top six everybody wants to be able to say two time champion uh, Brennan certainly got the team to do it I, I like Mega Charizard X and Alola Ninetales they're very powerful Pokemon I think with any team that's got those two on their team the key to the season is going to be can you keep hazards off the field so that Charizard's not taking half from rocks before it mega evolves and nine tails isn't taking you know 25%. it's damage from rocks and it's just he'll have to be really good with hazard support he's got really good hazard support so i think he can do it um but yeah i overall i think he's uh, definitely a threat this season yes he is definitely uh and in my number six i actually have the president of tltpg uh, uh, uh and in the form of the ready blue wizard uh, uh and his team, the Russellville Rockets. Uh, uh, as you sort of said, uh, Arthur, Prez uh, is a solid player, and he can play well. And he actually has that uh, extra drill, uh, which sort of, depending on the sort of ability you run, it can destroy teams. So it's a solid mon. And he also has what the extra drill, Hydreigon. Uh, I'm not seeing a fairy type, actually. On his team, Grand Bull. Oh, Grand Bull, yes. Sorry, I completely forgot about that. Yeah, so and there's a solid call there. Or even just build with the extra drill and also High Dragon. Uh, I think his run has to a team by the result alone, basically. So it all depends on what he has, and he also has the Steely and Z uh, for the extra drill, uh, which can just, uh, which can just like destroy a tough wall. In the end, but yeah, but uh, I actually have uh, Thumb Brother 2 and his team, the Salt Lake City Swampert, uh, uh, in the number five spot because as I said earlier, Brandon has a solid team. Uh, uh, he's actually won the LDL season two, I think. Uh, I'm pretty sure he won, yeah. So, Brandon is a solid player and he can actually back up his team. And if you look at his team, uh, he actually has every type that is like available uh, on his draft. So you can cover, so, so we can cover in, uh, any weakness uh, with a stab typing. So, uh, so he's actually built quite a solid team uh, uh, with a high attack stat in the form of one uh, 106. So it's a solid team. All right, so uh, back to me. Uh, the Arizona Volcarona at my number five spot. Uh, we got another former champion. This is the defending champion, ladies and gentlemen, uh, sporting a, another hyper offensive team. And I, I know Mark. Uh, he's he's all about the hyper offense. So I know it suits his play style. With with any kind of hyper offensive team, it's going to come down to did did you make switches in the middle of the game that just cost you because you didn't have the bulk and the, the only uh, problem I really see is just uh, switching into fairies. I believe 
Uh, Entei is the only thing other than Probopass that resists fairy, so uh, yeah. probably not going to bring Probopass too often, so that could uh, leave Entei running Assault Vest a lot of the weeks um, and really forcing it into one role. But um, I know he's uh, he's got some ideas up in his head and can make some moves. Um, other, outside of that, that's really the only thing I can say negatively. This team is absolute power. Um, he's got two di different unburdened users. He's got Tapu Bulu. He's got Entei. I mean, he's he's got a lot of power on this team. A lot of good speed control on the team. And uh, I think what his is his favorite mega. So he's poised uh, to take the title and be the, not only the first two-time champion, but back-to-back -back champion. Um, and uh, yeah, really, really like this team. Uh, very little weaknesses, and teams that feature Halucha and do it well uh, are are bound to be successful. So that's why I've got Mark at my number five spot. Yep. All right, so I will go into number four now. I've got the Des Moines Darmanitan and Coach Carlos at my number four spot. Uh, another former champion, not in the LDL, but in the FBL. He won season two. Uh, very strong battler, and uh, he's he's really good at team building week in and week out to bring a lot of consistent, uh, a lot of consistency to the draft league format. So he's definitely got a team that is pretty scary on paper. Uh, huge fan of Zapdos. I think it is uh, so underrated for the the tier one that it's in. <laughs> Um, and I think it can just really do uh, a little bit of everything. I like the fact that um, he's able to wait to get a really strong Mega. I think Mega Houndoom complements the team even without Sun. I think Sylveon and the Gastrodon give him a lot of really good defensive options, and Kofagrigus is an absolute pain, um, something that a lot of people have to uh, prepare for. He's got uh, Hazards and Excelgore and Metagross, so it'll be exciting to see if Excel Gore is something that comes week in and week out uh, so that Metagross doesn't have to carry the load as the hazard. But uh, overall, really strong team and um, expecting him to make a uh, deep run in the playoffs. Yes, definitely. Uh, uh, and, uh, and in the number four for me, I actually have the Winnipeg Jellicent and also the defending LDL offseason uh, uh, LC League. Matt... Uh, uh, he actually beat Brennan in the in the in the little cup finals four oh so he's at a height at the moment. Error in the draft league format, so this matter's come out and he's actually drafted a uh, high attack and also high defense. Uh, uh, and also like base ninety one specials. So Matt is a solid team and just sort of stat wise basically. And he also has a great core error in the form of Forges, Registeel, and also Komoto, and also Victini, Tangrowth, oh, oh, which also has the option for Regenerator, and also Mega Sharpedo. So he also has the form of Prankster, or in the form of uh, tor uh, Tornadus Incarnate, and also a fast Volt Turner, and with Raikou. So, so he so he has all of the fundamentals for a draft team, and I can see him taking it to the playoffs and also possibly reaching finals if he's able to play the team the way that I can see it being played in my head. Uh, uh, and then number three, I actually have the Moines, Dominatans, and their coach Carlos. Basically for the same reasons as also Arthur, but uh, everybody is Zapdos, which is a brilliant mon in the draft format, it can just do so many things, and also, re and also for the removal of, of hazards, and also take like a thunder wave. <laughs> it's just amazing, basically. Uh, he also has what the meta growth, uh, uh, the meta growth, and also the uh, meta growth, uh, uh, and also the uh, Salgor, which can also set hazards, and he also has what the cryogonal Salamance, Serena. And also Zapdos, which can also uh, take away Hazard. So, so it's an amazing team, built solid, which can do many things uh, when it comes down to it. Cool. So I've uh, I've got Coach Matt and the Winnipeg Jellicent at my number three spot. 
for one simple reason. There, his team is stupid bulky. Um, yes. He's got. So I'll just go through the base stats real quick. Base 85 HP, base 102 attack, base 103 defense, base 91 special attack, base 91 special defense. That is, that's terrifying. So I, I think what's going to make it hard prepping for Matt is figuring out which wall he brings because he has so many. Uh, and there's a lot of teams in the draft that rely on, you know, maybe one wall core to do the heavy lifting, yeah. whereas his whole team is like a, a, a wall core and, and it, it's still offensive which is really nice so uh, i think for matt um if he's if he's building to the best of his ability week in and week out he has shown that he's an absolute force he's a two-time champion and i uh, would expect no less than a, a deep playoff push if not a finals appearance in a victory for for matt and the winnipeg jelson so that's uh, him at my three spot and then moving into number two I've got the Toronto Totodile and the Blazing Squid. And, and I mean, you can talk for um, both of us on this, basically. And I'll talk to you for it? pick one. And you can talk for Squid oh. for this pick. And I'll talk oh, yeah, to you yeah pick exactly, one yeah. Yeah, so um, I've, got, I've got Squid here because it seems like he is in the finals of every LDL season that's played, whether it's, you know, an off-season or uh, just a, a main season of LDL. Uh, he is uh, he's he's easily the most consistent battler that's that's in the group so for him it's it's basically getting back to finals and getting championship glory he's got a team that can do that i like the fact that he took a lot of old favorites and mm. put them on the team stuff he's comfortable with mm. and gave him uh, a few slots to tinker with some new stuff and figure out uh, what's going to be the on the blazing squid squad so uh, overall he's got a really bulky team it's really scary I think that we'll be able to get the most out of it. Uh, really, anybody that takes Mega Absol, you, you see one or two pictures, right? You see somebody who never brings a Mega throughout the course of their season because mm-hmm. they couldn't figure out how to use Mega Absol, or somebody that's actually picking up kills with it, putting in work because it has a really diverse move pool and, and he, he's he had success with it. So mm-hmm. I, I, I Mega Absol on the right hands is very scary, mm-hmm. and so I expect to see Squid back in the finals, hopefully. Yes. Uh... And I wish you add on to that. Other for uh, Squid, uh, uh, he won season one, I think, and he also lost season five and, and also six. So, mm-hmm. uh, so I do know that Squid is actually hungry for a championship, and it also I just sort of get revenge on like everyone in the league, basically. So yeah, uh, and in the number one spot for. For both of us, I wish you have the laziest of all ghosts himself, the lazy ghost, and the Birmingham Aaron. But by his name, it didn't make me confused because this team is absolute power. Are in the form of Tapu Coco, Skarmory, Don Fan, Raquinid, Dal Fox, Kecleon, Mega Pidgeot, Kieran Black, Rose Raid, Quagsire, and and also Hitmon Shan. I'm gonna get started. Oh, and with uh. I just with the overall power on this team, like a little bit of Tapu Koko and, and also Kieran Black. And that is a solid sort of uh, two one core that can just do bits basically, like uh, with the high speed and also high bulk and just and just offense uh, that it creates for the opposing team to just try and like defend in a way basically. So, uh, he also has the uh, Araquanid uh, for webs, uh, because his team is, uh, is a tad slow, uh, uh, with like base 78 speed, so the webs up, uh, uh, he, he doesn't have to run a uh, like sort of a scarfer, and be able to sort of hit hard, all he has to do is just sort of turkey sets right, a run bulk, and and he can just break walls for days, basically. So, after a solid team, over the Earth, Tapu Koko, Kieran Black, and also Skarmory. And that's two T1s, and also T2. A very scary dragon, and also Steel Core, which is solid. Uh, he also has the uh, Raquinid, Dull Fox, and also Roserade, uh, which is solid also. And just sort of hit my chan. If, if, like, basically, uh, priority sort of stab. Essentially, he also has a Quagsire, 
which which is unaware oh which can actually stop sort of your setup sweepers basically uh and uh, and, uh, and also Kecleon, uh, he gets the protean as a hidden ability yeah mm-hmm. yeah yep. he does yeah so he can become whatever type he wants I like depending on his new set so that is amazing to have uh, and also just to make a picture uh, with a no guard nothing wants to take a hurricane basically so uh, this team is uh, is actually well built and with Arthur with his uh, with his four titles uh, three uh, three outside of LDL and also winning the LDL season four so he's a force to be reckoned with and and the high contender for the finals this season oh well thank you very very kind words i think <laughs> i definitely want to make some some moves throughout the season i did manage to grab a ghost or a dark type we'll see if that bites mm. me I, I rarely get all 18 types on a team um but excited to use kecleon uh, i think it's pretty pimp tier five and um i i think my my process with, with this was if i can pair up sticky webs with a bolt beam core um, the stuff that's not on the ground, like flying types, um, should go down to bolt beam coverage. So, um, mm. yeah, that was basically the draft idea yeah. <laughs> and, and how it played out. So, um, yeah, with, with that said, that's that's our power rankings, guys, and hope you like them. We're going to be doing these each week as the season progresses. So yes. we'll actually have hard data to base a list on instead yes. of kind of just doing our best to guess. So, uh, yeah, like we said yeah. on the front end, top eight, prove us right, top uh, our bottom eight prove us wrong. Mm. So, uh, and I was saying that, and we also promised to make these shorter. As, uh, yeah, definitely. As, as this is going into what four, uh, forty-two minutes. So, <laughs> uh, so it's long, but uh, there was a lot to cover. It was also being our first sixteen-player league. So, I just want to say that thank you to all the coaches uh, for playing and also drafting. Definitely. I am. Uh, I'm excited for this league and to also kick all of your butts. So, <laughs> uh, as you've been saying that, uh, this has been the boy from the land down under, Jetman99, and the CEO of, of LDL, signing off. And have a good one, guys. Peace.